in your kit, you'll find a fancy high-tech RGB LED. This is basically three LEDs in one case with all of their negative leads connected together inside. Now, if you're providing your own, it may have all of the anodes, the positive leads, uh, connected together inside. And the pins might be in a completely different configuration. You'll have to consult the data sheet or <laughs> figure it out by trial and error. The RGB LEDs from your kit has the following pin configuration. Notice the orientation of the flat spot on the flange. The common cathode pin is the longest and each consecutive lead is shorter. The order of the pins is RGB for red, green, and blue. Now, why RGB? Why those colors? Well, because those are the primary colors and with those colors, you can make any color you want right through to white. Now, maybe you're thinking back to art class and going, eh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Those aren't the primary colors. And you're correct. If you're working with pigments like paint, you can get any color of paint by mixing combinations of red, blue, and yellow. But here's the difference. With paint, you're starting with white and adding more and more colors, making it darker and darker until you mix maximum pigments of all three primary colors, where you basically get black. It's actually a really dark, ugly brown, but we'll call it black. With the television screen, we are painting with light. So we start with black, and if we mix the maximum color amounts together, we get white. It's the opposite of pigment coloring. So think of RGB as the antimatter of pigment paints. So many large screen billboard TVs you see at baseball diamonds, parks, or on the side of the road, those TVs, if you look closely, each pixel is one of these RGB LEDs. Many computer monitors now are LED, and that's just an array of millions of very small RGB LEDs. Now, if you don't have an RGB LED, you can follow along in these projects by simply using a red, green, and blue LED. Hook up the common cathode through a 1K resistor to the negative of your battery, and put the positive to the different leads. Mix the colors by applying positive to more than one LED or mix them in different ratios by running your 10K pot to one of the LEDs and positive to one of the others. Now, because just looking at the LED, you'll see the individual colors, mix the colors by shining the LED onto a piece of paper, a piece of white paper, and you can see the color where the beams of light overlap. Experiment by mixing different amounts of each color. What do you get? If you mix blue and red, what color do you get? What color do you get if you mix a lot of red with a little bit of green? So you can now hook up your RGB LED in place of the three LEDs in your color organ and you get your dance party light going on there. Once you've done that, another experiment you can do is to hook up your multimeter to your CDS cell. Print out some color swatches off of your printer if it's an inkjet or bubble jet, or use some non-reflective, something non-reflective like fabric. Uh, most color laser printers tend to give a very glossy print and therefore are pretty reflective, so it won't work well for this next experiment. White light is a mixture of all the colors. This is why when light goes through a prism or water droplets, the light gets split up into the full spectrum. The rainbow is all of the colors of white light being split up into its different colors. So what's happening with pigments is that blue pigment, for instance, absorbs all colors except blue, which it reflects. And so the only color you see is blue because the blue light is the only light being reflected. So basically, we're going to perform some simple color recognition and make our own color sensor. Simply point your RGB LED at your color sample so its light reflects off of the sample and onto your CDS cell. Uh, shield the CDS cell from stray light in the room. Shield doesn't have to be anything special. I mean, it could be just a chunk of cardboard. 
A red sample will reflect a lot of red light, but very little blue light if you use your blue LED. Very little red light will reflect off of a blue sample. So a red light on a red sample should reflect a lot of light onto the CDS cell, which should cause a lower resistance. If you use the blue LED, less light will reflect off of a red sample, and thus the CDS cell resistance should be higher. So if you know what color of light you are using, you can measure the amount of that color in the sample by simply measuring the resistance of the CDS cell. So this is why it's important not to use a reflective sample, at least not for now, because reflective samples will reflect all of the colors of light instead of absorbing some of the colors. Color sensing is useful in a surprising number of ways in robotics. For instance, a common kind of mobile robot is a line following robot in warehouses. The robot shines a light on the floor and follows a white or black line. Well, you could change that up and have different routes throughout the warehouse for the robot to follow with different colored lines for each route. The robot then uses its color sensor to detect which line to follow. Another place a color sensor comes in handy if you, is if you have a robot that solves a Rubik's Cube. You need to sense the different colors, as you can see in this LEGO Mindstorm's MindCuber project. It is shining light onto the colors and actually measuring the color so it can then calculate the solution to the puzzle. Later on in Module 5, where we get into vision systems, color recognition using a color video camera is powerful. It can mean the difference between recognizing your destination marker or not.